Okay, um, my time shows about three minutes after three, so we'll go ahead and kick off. We'll probably have some more people that'll pop in. Um, again, um, for those of you that may not have been on, my name is Dave Burt. Uh, I am the Vice President and Managing Director of the for-profit side of FAI, um, and also the President of Independent Market Solutions, also referred to as IMS. With us today uh, is uh, our partner, uh, two gentlemen from our partner, Tune, Omar Faruqi and Drew Tory. Um, both of these guys are coming to you live from the great state of New York, um, one in Brooklyn, one in uh, Manhattan. So a little, probably a little different than where you're from. I know me being in Tallahassee, um, it's a little different world here than it is where they are. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. Um, these guys have been a, a big part of the rebirth of Attune as a partner of, of uh, IMS. Um, we have had some, in the past, we've had a relationship, but it, it didn't take off the way we would have liked. And Omar and Drew are a big part of why this has taken back off again. Um, and we're excited to kind of relaunch and reintroduce these guys to um, our IMS uh, participating partners. Um, now, the, the, the folks on the phone today, I know not everybody is from Florida. We got several from our, some of our other uh, independent market solutions states. We've got, we represent independent market solutions, represent 17 states. So um, these guys have got their hands full a little bit with maybe some of the discussions they may have. Um, there are, there's, I think, one product that's not available, like in Louisiana, that might be available everywhere else, but Omar and Drew will be able to walk you through that. So with that, I will turn it over to Omar uh, to kick it off and get us started uh, for a tune. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks for the intro, David. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending today. Really excited to have you all on so we can kind of go over a little bit of what a tune's writing, um, what our hot classes are, and then go over a live quote demonstration so you can see how easy it is to quote and bind on our platform, which typically takes about five minutes to get a quote in. Um, so my name is Omar. I'm on the uh, business development side of Attune. I'm jo joined by Drew Torrey, also on the business development side. And uh, we work with a lot of our larger aggregated partners, such as IMS. And you know, our job is really to really focus on education, um, helping brokers get more awareness on what types of business they can write with Attune, where they can find a lot of successes, and then uh, really uh, help you step-by-step -step showcase really how to take advantage of the platform to maximize sort of the, the level of premium that you could potentially earn with us. So I'm um, really excited to be able to talk with you all today. I'm going to share my screen and uh, we're going to do a quick, quick walkthrough on the Attune platform. Uh, for those of you that have access, uh, you'd be familiar with this uh, with this screen. And um, this is our, our, our Attune portal. For those of you that haven't, I'll be introducing it now. Um, so this is basically when you have an account with Attune through IMS, uh, everything that you are able to do on this portal is uh, direct for you, the agent. So you have full binding authority. Uh, you have the ability to quote and write policies and issue them directly on the platform, which you see here in front of you. And you also have the ability to self-endorse um, any policy that you write so you can make changes after it's been bound. So um, this is the Attune platform. What we're looking at is sort of the main screen. So any recent account that you would have placed on the Tune, uh, you'll see the information appear right here in the center. Uh, along with any of the details on any of the product lines that you would have quoted. So just to introduce uh, sort of what Attune has on its platform, we're a commercial MGA. Uh, through our site, you can quote a variety of different commercial products. Uh, one of them is a business owner's policy, and that's written on accredited paper. They are an A-rated and admitted carrier. Um, we also write a cyber product through Coalition. There's another admitted market through which you can write any monoline cyber, or you can bundle it um, as an endorsement uh, with our bot product. Uh, we also have a workers' comp product with employers. They are another A-rated and admitted market where you can write monoline workers' comp. Uh, we have our general liability and professional liability with Hiscox. Uh, they are another A-rated and admitted carrier where you can write GL and ENO, um, and that is the uh, in addition to flood, we have the ability to write um, flood. It's a private flood market with Neptune. Uh, so it's not NFIP. And we're able to do a couple of interesting things with that market. 
um, that the NFIP can. So I'll be introducing all these products. So I'm going to go right now over to our guidelines just so we can take a look at what businesses we're writing for each product. Uh, and then uh, Drew is going to take over and uh, showcase how to do a live quote in the platform, which again, only takes about five to six minutes to get through. So um, when you're on the Attune platform here, uh, you're going to want to head over to the support icon, which is on that left-hand side. And there you'll have access to all of our guidelines. You can take a look and click and view the full class listing of all the businesses that we're writing. So I'm going to go in and, and review some of those guidelines for you for our different products. And I'm not going to go over the full class listing in detail, but what I will do is go over all the top classes that we've been writing with Attune, where we've been able to see some success nationally. Um, with Attune, we've had about a, a bind ratio of 30% nationally for most of these accounts that I'm going to go over. So these are highly successful classes, classes that are Main Street USA kind of businesses where you should be able to see a lot of traction. So again, the bot product is accredited. It's an A-rated and admitted carrier. Um, some of the classes that we're writing with the accredited BOP include contractors, artisan makers, professional offices, processing and service risks, restaurants, retail and wholesale, lessers risk. And then we do have some optional coverages, including E&O, cyber, that you're able to offer as an endorsement. Um, going over some of the guidelines here, um, we are licensed in pretty much every state for BOP except for Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, recently, we uh, lost the ability to quote BOP in the state of Louisiana. So in Louisiana, you are still able to quote um, every other product line that we offer, uh, except for BOP currently. So that will be adjusted in our guidelines shortly. Um, aside from that, getting into the, the gist of what you can write. So we're writing about 50,000 square feet for most businesses. Um, we're only we're restricted to 10,000 square feet for restaurants and artisan makers. Um, we're covering businesses that are 100% um, insurance to value when it comes to uh, building and personal property coverage. Um, as far as the age of buildings we can write, we don't have any restrictions. So we can write any age of building. Uh, the only thing that is if it's uh, older than 20 years, we ask for an updated roof. And if it's uh, 30 years and older, we just need updates on plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. Um, we're writing up to six stories in height for the, for the buildings that we are able to write. And um, as far as claims goes, uh, no more than three claims in the last five years uh, with no claim exceeding 20K. And um, cat cat storms are obviously excluded from this. Uh, for vacancy, no more than 30% vacancy uh, of total square footage. And um, as far as um, vacancy goes as well, we cannot write seasonal businesses. So if they have um, if they have vacancies of 60 days or more, that would be ineligible. Um, but so that's just the, just the guidelines portion. Uh, with the remainder of the time, I just want to focus on what businesses you can write uh, with a tune and going over again the class of business that we've seen a lot of success in. So um, we're going to start off with contractors. So contractors is a big source of revenue for us at Attune. We write a ton of contracting businesses nationally. Um, New York is one of those states where we have restrictions as far as we're not able to write contractors in the five boroughs or Nassau, Suffolk, and Westchester County. Aside from that, uh, nationally, very big source of revenue. We can cover a million in payroll for contractors, two million in revenue. And going over again, the classes that we are able to cover here. Um, one of the major ones, uh, any AC systems or equipment installation or repair. That's a huge class for us. We see a ton of, um, of premium come in for that class. Carpentry, whether it's construction of residential property or interior carpentry risks. It was another class that we see quite frequently come across. Uh, any appliance or accessory installation, whether that's in a commercial residence or a household, we write a ton of those contractors as well. Concrete construction is a huge class as well. Um, going further down the list, uh, drywall, electricians, um, furniture, uh, those are classes coming often. Uh, probably the number one class that we write is handy persons. So we do have the ability to write a handy persons class. Uh, we don't have the ability to write any general contractors, but handy persons is a good class for us, a good workaround. Um, interior decorators comes in quite often. Landscapers, uh, we have a huge market for. The only thing with the landscapers is we can't write a landscaper that does any tree removal or excavation. Um, and then we've got your plumbers, uh, refrigeration systems and equipment dealer or distributors. Uh, we added a class for solar panel in installation. Uh, it seems to be an up and coming uh, business classification. So any contractors that are doing solar panel installation, as long as it's three stories or less, we can cover it. And then we've got your tech and network hardware, whether it's commercial or residential, we can cover that. And those would be some of the, the major classes for the contracting side. 
Um, going over to the next line of business, um, artists and makers. So these are basically any boutique maker that's uh, making or selling a finished product, and they can do it either through e-commerce, off-premise, whatever have you. Um, it's a relatively new class for us. Um, some of the biggest um, classes that we're writing here, any apparel makers. So if they're making or selling an apparel, that tends to be a good class for us. The top class is definitely cosmetics. So any soaps, lotions, balms, serums, makeup. Um, that's a huge class for us on the maker side. And then we've got some good food ones. So, you know, cheese makers, chocolate, cocoa, um, jam, jelly, confectionery, ice cream. Those are all very big classes for us. Uh, and then there's probably the second biggest class would be jewelry. So we see a lot of jewelry makers making and selling that kind of product. So that's a huge one there. And the other other one that I've seen is pottery maker. So that's probably the, the third biggest class I've seen coming in this category here. Um, so that's the making category. Now we've got our professional office risks. And again, uh, we do have the ability at a tomb to write entire buildings, or we can also just cover tenants. And uh, office tenants are actually our most bound account. So nationally, we've got close to a 40% buying ratio on office risks. Um, so it's definitely our most successful class for quoting. Um, some of the classes that we're writing here, accounting services, that's an easy one. Um, advertising, um, any kind of consulting businesses we can cover the office for. Um, top two classes, medical and dental. Uh, we write a ton of those. Third biggest class, insurance agency offices. We can cover the, any insurance agent office, no big deal. Uh, we do have the ability to write engineers and architects, uh, but just the consulting. If they're actually engaged in construction, we won't be able to write the BOP, but if they're just consulting and they have an office risk, we can cover that as well. Uh, lawyer offices, we cover quite often. Um, collection agency offices. Uh, I mentioned medical, we also do payroll. Um, we can cover now software development. It's a pretty recent class for us. Uh, in addition to non-for-profit, as long as they don't do any on-site servicing or housing for clients, we can cover any non-for-profit office. And then we've got your vet offices. Um, real estate offices is another huge one. We write a ton of real estate agent offices. And then we added uh, two new classes, one for commercial condo associations and one for office condo associations. Uh, for processing and service risks, um, we're covering annual sales up to 20 million per account, and that's 10 per location. Um, some ineligible classes, just to note, um, no massaging, no day spas, you know, nothing uh, regarding tattoos or anything like that. That being said, pretty big class selection here for processing and service. Um, big ones here, barbershop, beauty parlor, nail salon, hail salon. Those are absolutely huge. Um, highest buying ratio in this category here. We also do a lot of automobile detailing and automobile glass repair. So that's another significant class that we're writing. Um, funeral homes and chapels comes in quite frequently, um, as does uh, any laundry or dry cleaning services. And uh, we do have the ability to write engravers, jewelry repair, printers, photographers, uh, and any uh, television or radio installation or repair. Um, next class is restaurants. This used to be our biggest book of business. Now it's moved to about a third. Uh, still a huge source of revenue for us on the restaurant side. Um, quick notes on ineligibility here. Um, all restaurants must be closed by 12 a.m. in order to be eligible. Additionally, uh, we're covering annual sales of 20 million per account, uh, but we um, restrict that to 10 million for taverns and wine bars, and it's 5 million per location. Um, another quick notes on ineligibility here. We are not able to write for our BOP bars, nightclubs, adult entertainment venues, no live entertainment venues. So if it's a restaurant and you got a guy playing a guitar, you know, in the corner of the restaurant or something like that, that's totally fine. But if tables are being removed for like a dance hall or anything like that, that's a quick no, no go. Um, but that being said, the classes that we're writing for the restaurant side are limited cooking, fast food, casual dining, fine dining. We have the ability to offer liquor liability for all these classes. And just going into a little bit of these classes here, um, for casual dining, we're writing your bistros, your cafes, uh, your diners with or without alcohol sales up to 25%. Uh, we can write your family style restaurants with or without alcohol up to 25%. Uh, and then we added a class for any taverns or wine bars. And for that, we can up up to about 30% total alcohol sales. Uh, for the fine dining side, uh, we've added a little bit more exposure here. So if it's a fine dining restaurant, we can cover up to 50% alcohol sales. Um, otherwise, it's uh, 30%. Um, on the fast food side, uh, some pretty standard stuff, right? So cafes, uh, buffet style, caterers, chicken places, delis, hamburger shops, pizza shops, seafood, um, takeout only restaurants. 
And then we added a couple of classes. One is any convenience food store that has a fast food restaurant in it. As long as there's no gasoline sales, uh, we can write that no problem. Additionally, we added any Asian style or ethnic style cuisine uh, that isn't eligible for us as well. Uh, and then on the limited cooking side, very similar classes, right? So coffee shops, uh, concession stands, donuts, pizza, salad bars, um, and then of course, uh, takeout only. And then you'll see that class again for convenience food store with a limited cooking restaurant, as long as there's no gasoline sales. Uh, retail and wholesale side. So these are our largest class listings. So there's about, there's over like a hundred for each of these. Um, it's a pretty significant class listing, a great source of revenue for a two, probably our second biggest class aside from office exposures. Um, you'll find similar restrictions here. So on the retail side, must be closed by 12 a.m. Annual sales of 20 million per account, uh, 4.75 per location. Quick notes on what we can't write. We can't do any tobacconists, no vape shops, no pawn shops, no adult themed businesses, no 24 hour operations, no grocery stores and no warehousing. That being said, again, a largest class listing, uh, just to go over what the biggest ones are. Um, any AC and equipment store, that's easy for us. Supplying stores, easy money. Uh, we added a class for art gallery, either non-for-profit or for-profit. Um, automobile parts and supply stores, absolutely huge. So definitely take advantage of that class. Um, we do liquor stores and we can offer liquor liability as well for the liquor stores. Uh, we have, um, what else is big here? Any bookshops, candy confectionery stores, any clothing, retail, apparel store, we can write it. Um, we do a lot, uh, as you can see, it's a huge re um, retail clothing store apparel listing. Um, we can do, like I mentioned earlier, the convenience food store. This is the one without the restaurant in it or the gasoline sales, uh, cosmetic shops, department stores, drug stores, electronic stores, fabric stores, um, florists we see a lot of, gift shops, furniture, uh, hardware and tool dis distributors. Um, home furnishing stores, home improvement stores, hobby craft stores, janitorial supply, jewelry. As you can see, there's just there's just a huge listing here. I'm just naming the big ones. Um, locksmiths. We see a ton of locksmiths come across. Um, excuse me. Um, any optical goods. We write a ton of that as well. Uh, we write paint, painting supply stores. Pharmacy is a big one for us. We can do pharmacies, plumbing supply, refrigeration equipment. Um, photographic equipment stores, sporting goods stores, um, trophy stores. We added classes for any variety stores. Those are like your 99 cents discount housing. Um, you can find any video rental stores out there. We can write them. Um, not too many left with Netflix. Um, and then on the wholesale distribution side, I won't go into it. It's basically the exact same class listing as our retail side but on the wholesale distributor side. So any, any class that you basically saw on the retail side, we can write it for wholesale distribution. One of the ones that I wanna make a note of pointing out, uh, while we can't write grocery stores on the retail side, we do have the ability to write grocery distributors. And on that wholesale side, that's actually one of the biggest classes and a huge source of premium. So uh, if you do see that come across, um, that's definitely a big win for us. Um, and then, you know, our last class here is lesser's risk. So as I mentioned, we do have the ability to write strip malls and with multiple commercial tenants inside it. So that single occupancy LROs, multiple occupancy LROs. An important thing to note is if we're, if we're covering an entire building or if we're covering a strip mall, all the tenants must be commercial tenants. So we cannot write any mixed tab buildings. We cannot write any residential exposure, but as long as all of those tenants in that building or that strip mall are all commercial tenants and they're eligible in our guidelines, we can write it and they're a huge source of revenue. Uh, we also have the ability to write a wind deductible from one to 10% in most states. So it's extremely beneficial, uh, particularly when you're writing you know, large building exposures like this. And I just wanna note again, uh, if you are trying to write a tenant in a mixed hab building, we can write the tenant, no problem. It's just the entire building. Again, if there is uh, any residential exposure, we wouldn't be able to write, but a tenant is just fine. And um, that's the gist of our, of our guidelines for the BOP. Another point that I want to note out is our eligibility in regards to coastal capacity. So currently we can write coastal business right up into the water. Um, there are only a certain number of states where we have restrictions as far as coastal capacity, Florida and Texas being two of them. In Florida and Texas, we can write business five miles from the coast or greater. Um, and and uh, in addition, there are other states where we have that restriction and that's Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, 
Uh, so in those states, we are unable to write business on the coast. It's got to be five miles or greater. Um, any other state that I didn't mention, we can write up, up into the coast, and that's completely fine. And again, with that wind deductible of 1% to 10%, it's a huge advantage uh, when you're trying to write any coastal property um, that's not in those states that I listed. Otherwise, it'd be, like I said, the five-mile radius. So that's just of our BOP guidelines. With the remaining time for these other products, I'm really just going to highlight the classes that are exclusive to these, um, to these uh, product lines so that you can see where... Um, there is an overlap where you have the ability to do some monoline stuff. So again, workers comp, we're writing with employers. Um, class of the business that we write with employers that we can't write for Bob. Um, number one, bars and nightclubs. So while we are unable to cover that for Bob, we do have an option to write bars and nightclubs for our workers comp product. Uh, these include 24-hour operations for either. So we can write a 24-hour bar, 24-hour nightclub, no problem at all. Uh, retail and food services, Whatever listing we have for BOP, we offer it for work comp. So that overlap, same with medical services. Um, another unique class, schools and daycare. So we have the ability to write schools and daycare centers for our workers comp. Uh, we also have the ability to write hotels and motels for workers comp. We cannot do that for BOP. We can do it for workers comp. Uh, professional services, similar class listing as BOP, so I won't go into it. Automotive services, that's a huge one. So I'm just going to scroll down and head to automotive services so we can kind of see the classes that we can cover. For BOP, it's mostly just automobile parts and supply stores. For workers comp, we can get pretty in-depth. So uh, we can cover your auto body manufacturing shops, your repair facilities, um, your um, you know installations, service centers, uh, and gas stations. So huge, huge source of revenue for us on the workers comp side for any of those um, automobile classes. And then the biggest class that we offer is manufacturing. We cannot do it for BOP. We can write like basically any kind of manufacturing business. I'll just scroll through so you can see how large the listing is. But any manufacturing business you could think of, we have a workers' comp classification for it. And we also have an additional listing, as I'm scrolling down, for food manufacturing. So huge, huge, huge class listing. I'm not going to go into it. But again, if you do want to access our guidelines and take a look, manufacturing is our biggest source of revenue in the workers' comp side. And then we just recently added the ability to write landscapers for workers' comp. So that's the only contracting business currently that we offer workers comp for. So definitely take advantage if you have the opportunity to bundle that for a landscaper. Uh, again, just to highlight the differences, I'm going to highlight our general liability and E&O product with Hiscox, A-rated and admitted carrier. Um, minimum premium for a Hiscox policy, by the way, it's about $370 for a GL. Um, so it's very, very competitive. On BOP, minimum is about $500. Average premium for both about 1500. So as you can see, we're really riding these small commercial businesses, but we obviously we do have the ability to get very large given our limitations on both square footage and annual sales. So uh, very competitive rates for both the products. Classes that we can write for Hiscox GLPL that we can't cover for BOP. Any architecture and engineering business, we have the ability to write GL for. It's something we can't do for BOP. Uh, similarly, consulting. There's a large swath of consulting businesses we have the ability to write GL and PL for. Um, contractors, same as Bob, creative and design. That's another unique class that we can cover on the GL side. In addition to financial services, and that includes, you know, tax brokers. Um, it includes financial analysts, consultants, things like that. Um, also health, beauty, and fitness. We cannot cover any gyms or any fitness stuff for Bob, but we do have the ability to write it for GL. That includes like coaching, personal trainers, things like that. Uh, janitorial services, very similar to Bob. Landscaping, similar to Bob. For the GL side, we have the ability to write legal services. That includes notary, trustee services, lawyers, things like that. Um, marketing, public relations, pretty self-explanatory. We've got a miscellaneous business category that covers a lot of consulting businesses and other things like that. And then um, real estate, retail, very, very similar to Bob. But technology would be the big one. For the technology stuff, we can write website design, um, anyone setting up a network installation or service. So tech is a really big class for the GLPL side. And a really a huge source of revenue for us. Um, last thing I want to go over, um, cyber we'll go into kind of when we're quoting a little bit, but um, just want to highlight for our Neptune flood program. Um, where it's again, it's private flood product with Neptune. Uh, you're able to write one of the, one of the things, the huge advantages of writing with Neptune is we can cover contents only. So you don't have to, the, the business, the, if uh, the business owner doesn't have to own the entire building in order to receive flood coverage, he can be just a tenant. And we have no problem covering just that for a contents only flood coverage. So it's pretty huge. Uh, it gives us the ability to write a lot in the state of New York and all these coastal states. So 
Um, definitely, if you're writing Flood, give it a shot. And uh, one of the cool things that we're going to feature when we're quoting is that a Neptune Flood quote actually auto-generates with any quote that you put into our system. So we'll highlight that now. We're going to turn over to Drew. Uh, we're going to showcase how to get a five-minute quote and bind on our platform, which is really the, the, the main draw for our product is how easy it is to quote and bind a policy. And as you'll see, we don't require any accord forms, and we also don't require any loss runs to bind coverage. So we're going to highlight that now. When you're ready to quote a new business, you're going to head over to the accounts tab, which you'll see on the left-hand side, and then you're going to select new client to start to quote that new business. So I'll uh, hand it to Drew to take over here. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you, Omar. Yep. So uh, just going to quickly walk through the steps here just to show you kind of the, the overall speed of the quoting process, and then we can kind of take questions after. But you'll start to see as we're plugging in this information, it'll start to be pre-filled. That's the third-party data that we're using as we're underwriting uh, the quote in live time. So it's bouncing that information off our underwriting guidelines should generate some uh, quick information for you that kind of cuts out the time that it usually takes to get a quote. So if you're quoting an eligible business, it should pop up that you can't even get the quote to begin with. So you'll see some of these options are grayed out. This is our demo portal. So some of the, uh, some of the available products aren't stuff that's live yet, but uh, you'll see that for this barbershop, obviously we can get a wide range of our, our commercial products, including BOP, Cyber, Workers' Comp, GLPL. So we can click in and just get a BOP quote for example's sake. And this is just quick highlights of some of the stuff that Omar just went over as far as, you know, eligibility guidelines, 24 hour operations. You just have to click through that you've read and agreed. And here you just type in, so effective date, obviously base state, organizational type. Um, and so here, this is kind of where the cyber comes into play. You can put in the cyber or your website of the client and it'll automatically start generating a cyber quote for you. So uh, that kind of gets into the unique features of our cyber product with risk assessment. So it'll pull some you know, data on the website and any type of active risk that's going on as far as cyber coverage goes. Uh, years in business, you can add multiple locations here if it's a multi-location uh, operation. You can remove those. Uh, and then based on this uh, address that you input, it should start to pre-fill on the next, I think, two pages uh, as far as building limit goes, uh, square footage, things like that, um, BPP limits. Um, so it's pulling that information now after you put that uh, business address in. <clears throat> full-time employees just put in five aop deductible so this comes into play uh if you select no wind on the uh the next page this uh aop deductible will pick up the wind peril click yes if you want to mark off as a lesser's risk um this is not so we'll just keep it as no We've got business category so this building limit, you see, you see a zero, that sometimes is pre-filled based on the address that you put into the, the quote. Uh, we can leave that as zero. We can just have an, them as a tenant. Um, and then same thing down here, based on the address, a lot of times this construction information, square footage, that'll be pre-filled. Always double check based on your records. Sometimes you know the data that you pull from the internet, it's not always uh, up to date. And based on the year built, again, no age restriction, but it will ask you for the uh, corresponding updates based on the year that you put in. You can click through that, yes. <clears throat> and then here's the breakdown of your coverages. So time element, um, and it makes it easy. You can click into the help bubbles to see what exactly it's asking, um, but we can leave those $0 as standard. And then you can increase the period of indemnity up to 24 months. It comes standard at 12. Uh, and then wind is uh, required, Massachusetts, New York, Florida. Um, you can increase up to 10%. <clears throat> yeah, we could take that off. And you can schedule equipment breakdown coverage, additional debris removal. We'll leave that standard at 25K. And then our per occurrence limit standard is the one two option. We can go up to a two four uh, or drop it down. Uh, you can also increase the damage to the premise rented to you up to a uh, million dollars in additional coverage. <clears throat> and this is where, so you can 
start to, I don't know, it's on the next page, you can schedule um, AIs. But yeah, based on this being a contract, uh, it'll ask you for some handbooks, information and things like that. We do offer hire non-owned uh, auto. That's something to note, uh, just not on restaurants um, and contractors. If it's, you know, a van being used, we can't cover it. So employee dishonesty limit, you can leave that standard. Uh, a lot of times, I think it's just in maybe New York, the uh, certificate acts of terror coverage that'll be included automatically. Um, but other states, I don't think it's automatically included. And then here's that cyber coverage I mentioned. So it will automatically suggest you can endorse the, the BOP policy uh, with the coverage, or uh, you can have a standalone quote as well. Um, so it'll give you the, the coverage options there if you want to opt into that. And then this is what I mentioned earlier. You can schedule some AIs here uh, along with waiver of subrogation and submit it. And you'll get a, a quote <clears throat> along with the application input, which is basically everything you just typed into the system. It's kind of a tunes version of an accord form. Uh, so you can keep that for your records. And you can play a little game while we're waiting here by clicking the, the policies and getting some, some points. Drew, I'm going for the high score. <laughs> I'm curious what the, uh, the stats are on highest score ever clicked in. Perfect. <clears throat> so you got those two documents there, the, the quote document that's preparing right now, the application input for your own records. Um, sometimes we have some of our agents uh, print that out, have the insured sign it just for their own records, but again, uh, not required on our end. And the newest feature is kind of the quick edit feature that you'll see right there. So you can actually play around with some of the limits without, you know, going back into the uh, exact quote. Uh, and I'll show you kind of how the overall premium changes based on uh, some of the limits that you're playing around with if you're just trying to kind of get a, a better price for your client. And you can save multiple versions of the, the same quote, uh, you know, rename it if you're working on different coverage limits, things like that. Uh, it'll automatically save for you. You can go back at any time. Um, and then just uh, to reiterate what Omar pointed out earlier about the, uh, the flood option that's uh, always suggested. So you can actually click in, check out and get a quick flood option based on the information you've already put in. So you don't have to go in and get, uh, you know, the whole uh, quote flow, you don't have to redo. Uh, so it makes it super easy just to pull that and add it onto the BOP. Just want to point out also, um, as you can see for the quote, we didn't require any accord forms or anything like that. So actually, we generate that for you with this application input. So all the information that you put in for that quote, you can easily download it on this application input. And that will be your accord form, which you can use if you want to shop that quote around and you know compare it with different other carriers. Um, all the information that you input it is easily digestible here in the PDF. You can just download and if you want to shop around that quote, you can. Yeah, good point. And just looking at the chat, there's some questions. Uh, let me just go through these. <laughs> Over five minutes. Yeah, I talk, I talk too slow, I guess. Um, Will quoting process kick the quote out if it's not uh, not the distance desired to write coverage? Uh, it should flag it. Does it kick you out in real time, Omar, or is it after the fact it just pops up that this is ineligible based on distance? If you enter in a distance that's uh, that's ineligible, when the quote when you go through the quote flow, it will decline based on the distance to the coast. So the system will yeah. let you know after a quote is processed. Um... Um, yes, we'll, we'll go through the uh, uh, David and, uh, and Autumn. We'll go through the questions now. Last thing I want to just showcase is how the binding coverage works on the portal. So um, when you're ready to bind that account, uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see what I did there. I just went to the continue to bind option on the top right hand side. Um, you can enter in the insurance email address, telephone number, and then you as the broker would enter in your information so you can receive notifications on invoices, renewals, cancellations. Um, and then when you're ready to select the payment options, we offer either a one pay, a four pay or a 10 pay. 
we directly bill the insured. So when you select which payment option you'd like, uh, we will automatically send an invoice directly to the insured's email address, and then they can leave payment either through credit card, ACH, whatever is easiest for them. Uh, you just confirm their email address here, and then you hit bind quote, and then that's it. The quote is fully bound, authorized, ready to go. The policy document will generate automatically. So you can download that right here, share it with the insured. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, there is a self-endorse option. So once this policy is bound, if you want to make any changes post bind, you just hit that endorse option and you can make any changes to DBA, account, coverages, anything that you like, it would make it very easy to do so. Additionally, on every page that we just went through, on the bottom right-hand side, there's a support tab. You can chat directly with an underwriter at any point to ask any questions that you have about quoting, appetite, coverage. So that's available on every page and you can chat directly with an underwriter through that feature there. But um, yeah, that's just a bit. So um, Autumn, do we want to get into uh, the chat questions now? Yes, that sounds good. Looks like we had a, a couple um, regarding a small strip center, um, a couple of different things if you scroll up to the top. But yes, you can go and get right into that. Cool. Uh, let's see. Non-renewed, not sure why we could not rewrite it. Uh, was there, there was no reason given about the non-renewal for the strip center? Typically when a business is, is non-renewed, um, you'll receive an email notification uh, within a, a detailed amount of time uh, listing the reason for the non-renewal. Um, if uh, it could be a variety of reasons, uh, could be vacancy in the strip mall, could be uh, new coastal restrictions that have kicked in that have made it ineligible due to the distance to the coast. Um, so there are a couple of reasons why, but again, chatting with an underwriter directly or responding to our underwriting team is probably the best way to figure out, but they will in the non-renewal letter include the reason for the non-renew and it'll be in a sufficient amount of time for you to uh, find coverage elsewhere. Um, five miles from the ocean or the river. So it's the ocean. So the coast is defined as the ocean. So uh, in some states though, like Mississippi, it'll be the river because uh, it's a large enough body of water that we consider it. So it's really state-based. So the best way to figure it out is to, again, quote it in the system. It'll uh, decline it if it's within an improper distance from the coast, but coast typically means uh, the ocean. Yep. Uh, kicked out for Joyce and Masonry built 1965. I'm assuming that didn't have any of the um, proper updates based on construction type. Sprink yeah, that would require, I think, sprinkler, correct, Omar? Yeah, we require sprinklers for joisted masonry. So if uh, even if it's uh, an age of 1965, if they don't have proof of updates to, for example, the roof or the sprinkler system, then that would be an ineligible business. How to get a tune. Uh, so to get a tune, um, just contact uh, anyone at your IMS rep or FAIA rep. Uh, we have a landing page specifically created for anyone that wants to get appointed with us. And the appointment process is very simple. You click on that link that we created for you guys. You enter in your agency information. We send out a producer agreement and we can get you signed up in two business days. Um, so after two business days, you get your own login credentials and you're free to hop in and quote any business that you have on your desk. So it's pretty simple. Um, LRO that has auto repair exposure. Yeah, so because um, auto repair uh, is only in a, an available class for our workers' comp product, it is not available for BOP, uh, that would make the LRO ineligible. So any ineligible business that's within, for example, a strip mall or a large office building, it would render the entire risk ineligible. But again, if you are just looking to cover a tenant in a building that has an ineligible exposure, we can cover the tenant. But if we're looking to cover a building or a strip mall, every single tenant has to be both commercial and eligible. So in this case, uh, a repair shop, not an eligible commercial business for us. So that would render the LRO ineligible. Yep. Uh, will we write X wind if less than five miles from the ocean? No, we, we don't offer that. Uh, Dan asked the carrier for the BOP. So the carrier for the BOP is accredited. Um, we just recently, the only state that we have active that was not on accredited BOP is New York. They're on Blackboard. Uh, but um, that will change starting March 15th. So as of March 15th, uh, all of our eligible states will be accredited. Uh, 
and they are um, an uh, A-rated and admitted carrier. Let's see, any other questions? I see David responded with the commission rates there. Perfect. Does anyone else have any questions uh, for Drew and myself? You can chat it in, you can speak, whichever is easier for you. Yeah, and just to go back to the, the question about kind of when the portal might kick you out for ineligible business. Again, it depends on the reasoning. You know, if it's an el ineligible class that we don't offer, then you won't be able to even, you know, pull up the quote to start typing in the information. Um, it'll just say ineligible uh, on, the, on the get a quote button. But if it's a reason after the fact where, you know, it's crime score or something like that, it will jump and pop you out of the quote flow and say this is declined for X. So it should give you the reasoning. Um, and there is usually a button to then contact the underwriting team if you need to send in any you know clarifying information uh, to you know argue around the declination. Any other questions? I don't think I don't think there are any. If there are, if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will forward the information to. Omar and Drew. Um, Omar, Drew, thank you guys for coming on today and and um, you know describing what it is that you have to offer. And thank you for being your partnership with uh, Independent Market Solutions and FAI. We we appreciate it too and look forward to growing the program. Um, thank you everyone for for taking the time also to jump on and and learn a little bit more about Attune. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. At, dbert, B-U-R-T, at F-A-I-A.com, and I'll be happy to forward the information along. Likewise. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, everybody. You bet, everybody. Thank you.